So guys, we are done with two ways of installing Kali Linux, one on Windows and one on Mac. We saw how to install it using VMware as well as VirtualBox. In the third part, we'll see how to install Kali tools on any Linux distribution. It could be Ubuntu, Fedora, Peppermint operating system, or any other version or distribution of Linux. The procedure is actually similar in every Linux distribution. So if you follow up on one Linux distribution, you can go ahead and do it on the Linux distribution of your choice or the one that you're using. One thing you should remember is that Kali Linux is not for the daily Linux purposes. Well, it's only for ethical hacking or web application penetration testing for these purposes. So guys, we'll be using a tool called Catulin. Let me spell it for you guys. It's K-A-T-O-O-L-I-N. So let's just search for that. There we go. It's a script that helps you to install Kali Linux tools on your Linux distribution of your choice. So it's usually the GitHub script. So click on the first link that you find. So for those of you who like to use penetration testing tools provided by Kali Linux development team, you can effectively do that on your preferred Linux distribution using this tool, which is Kotlin or K-A-T-O-O-L-I-N. So as you can see, once you've installed Kotlin properly on your operating system, you should be greeted with this page. I'll show you how to do that. Don't worry about it. So the purpose of asking you to see this page is to take a look at prerequisites. So first thing you need to have a Python of version 2.7 or above installed in your operating system, and you need a Linux distribution system. It could be Ubuntu or it could be Fedora or Peppermint, any other Linux distribution. I have Ubuntu here. I'll be using VMware Workstation Pro. It's already open, but let me just go back. All you have to do is search for Ubuntu and click on the first link. So as you can see, there are a lot of options for to install Ubuntu. Just click on this and you'll be able to download a file ISO image. I've already done that. I'm not doing it again. Let's go back to VMware Workstation. As you can see, I already have my Ubuntu operating system installed. Installing Ubuntu is very straightforward. So just take a look at the instructions that you need to know when you're installing Ubuntu. Once you've done the installation, it should look something like this. So let me power up my Ubuntu operating system. So as you can see, once you install, you'll land up on this page and it's asking for the password. You set up this username and password during the installation process, so don't worry about it. Click on enter. So let's say you are a Unix lover, you like using Unix platform, but right now you want to use certain tools for performing application penetration testing and ethical hacking. You just don't need all the tools, you need few tools. In that case, instead of installing Kali Linux on your operating system, Installing only certain Kali Linux tools will be the best option, right? For that, like I said earlier, we'll be using Kotlin. I have a set of four or five commands that you need to use to install Kotlin. First of all, you need to have Git on your operating system. Let me check if I have it or not. Anyway, I have these five or four set of commands which we'll be using. I'm going to attach them in the description below. So if you want, you can use them. As you can see, install Git first command. It says unable to use it because I have to log in as a root user. So let me just, it's asking for the password. Yeah, now I'm a root user. So let me try the command again. That's app to get install git. Yeah, installing git. It's just going to take a few minutes. While this is happening, let's go ahead and explore Kotlin tool. Let me go for Firefox here. Let's search for Kotlin. So it's the first link, guys, like I said earlier. So let me scroll down. As we saw, this should be the home page. And we did take a look at the requirements. So let's just go back and see if it's done. It's still happening. So one thing, guys, make sure you have a Python of version 2.7 or above. Otherwise, the entire thing won't work at all. Yeah, guys, it's done. Now we are done with the first step. We need to install or we need to clone the Kotlin, right? So what you do, like I said, I have a command right here. Just copy this and place it over there. Control C. Let's go back to terminal and let me clear the screen for you guys. Yeah. And paste. So basically I'm cloning it here. And the next command is I'm copying the Python file to this directory and click on enter. It's done. It's just quick process. Now we'll have to change permissions so that we have access to use Kotlin. For that, basically we are giving execute permissions. So chmod plus x. Make sure you take a look at that. Plus x and enter. 
We are ready, guys. Now our Kotlin is installed, say LIN. So as you can see, it's all ready. But the first thing that you should do is before you upgrade your system, it says please remove all the Kotlin repositories to avoid any kind of problems. So as you can see, it shows you like five options here. First one, it says add Kali repositories and update. Next, view categories. Like I said, Kali Linux has 600 plus tools, right? So you have different tools categorized under different headings. Then you have classic menu indicator. It's nothing here. As you can see, I have a small icon here. If you click on that, it'll just show you different menus. That's all. And if you want to install Kali menu for easy access, you can do that as well. So let me just click one. Under one, it says add Kali Linux repositories, update, remove, and view all content. So let's try removing them. Let's drive with adding repositories. It says there are certain duplicate signatures removed and all that. So let's just try to remove like they suggested earlier. They've been deleted. Now one. So if you guys want to go ahead and update the repositories already existing ones, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not doing it now because it's going to take a while. So if you want to go back, just click back. It's as easy as that. Now let's say I want to view categories and install one tool of it. As you can see, there are like number of huge number of categories here. So I have uh, web application penetration tools here. I have password attacks. I have exploitation tools. Well, if you are interested, there's an introduction video of what is Kali Linux by Dureka in the cybersecurity playlist. So go ahead and take a look at that. We have explained like about five to six popular tools in Kali Linux. Anyway, getting back to today's session, let me just say four. As you can see, it lists all the web application tools. So if I want to install all tools, there's an option that's zero. But let's just say I want to install a tool called a SQL map. I'm sure you might have heard a SQL map. If not, it's okay. It's a tool which you use for checking out vulnerabilities that are present in application database system. So anyway, it asks insert the number of the tool that you want to install. Let's say 27. So as you can see, it's installing. So it's as easy as that, guys. So once you're done installing, I'll get back to you. Any tool I just showed you how to use how to install SQL map, which is there in web application tools. You can go ahead and do that for other different types of tools as well. Suppose you want to install all the tools. You can go for zero as in click on zero option. So there you go, guys. I just showed you how to install one tool so you can go ahead and do that for any kind of tool under any category. So if you just want to go back, click back and go for other types of tools. Let's say eight. There you can see. So whatever different type of exploitation tools you want, you can go ahead and install them. Let me just click back and the back. Sometimes when you try to install all the tools, you might get an error saying that the file doesn't exist or repository doesn't exist. All you have to do is go for one first option here. As you can see here, you have option two, which is update. So update your repositories. Make sure the Kali Linux mirror, which is present for the updation, is the right one. Once you've done that, you won't get any errors. All the tools will be installed properly. So suppose you want to get back from these Kotlin easy, just press Control C. And yeah, as you can see, it says goodbye. So that's as easy as it is to use Kali Linux tools on any kind of Linux distribution. While I've showed you on Ubuntu, the procedure is same on any other Linux distribution, guys. So there we go, guys. We're done with three things. First, we did on Windows using VMware, then on Mac using VirtualBox. And third, I showed you how to install Kali Linux tools on any kind of Linux distribution. And finally, there's one last demo. Here we'll see how to install Kali Linux on Windows operating system using Windows subsystem for Linux feature. So let me get back to my operating system. We won't be needing VMware workstation anymore. So guys, we'll be using a feature called Windows subsystem for Linux, which is by default present in all the current versions of Windows 10. This is actually for those who prefer using Kali Linux command line interface. So make sure to listen to me properly. Who oh, use this option only if you are a pro in using command line interface or if you have any experience using command line interface. Otherwise, just go ahead and use VMware or VirtualBox and install Kali Linux graphical user interface option. So yeah, this Windows subsystem for Linux allows you to run Linux distributions as subsystem on your Windows operating system. This feature is really a new feature. It exists only in Windows 10. So you need to use latest version of Windows 10 to perform this demo or use this option. And in addition to that, we also have other prerequisites, especially we need to have git install or you can go ahead and zip the file, which is Windows subsystem for Linux files normally, but having git is also a nice thing. Secondly, you need to have Python of version three or above. 
Make sure you've installed Python and set up the path. To check if your Python is installed properly or not, just say CMD, go for your command prompt, and just type for Python version. It should show you version properly, only then you can be sure that your Python is properly installed. As you can see, for me, it's showing 3.6.7, which is definitely above 3, and it's properly installed and the path is set. The first thing you need to do is enable WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux. Just go for the control panel and there click on programs and turn Windows features on or off. Make sure not to touch any other features. It might mess up your operating system. So scroll down. It's usually at the bottom. By default, it's never enabled. If you're using it for the first time, you need to enable it. So first thing you do is enable it. As you can see here, it says Windows Subsystem for Linux. Make sure you enable it, check mark it and click on OK. Once you have done that, run your command prompt or terminal as an administrator. All you have to do is right click on it and click on run as administrator and yes. Now we'll be enabling base distribution. That is, like I said, Windows subsystem for Linux allows you to run a Linux distribution as subsystem, right? But for that, we need to enable this base distribution. For that, you need to install the base distribution or any kind of Linux distribution that you need. So just use LX run and install. So once you type that, this is the output which you get. It says it's the legacy Windows system for Linux distribution. So you can go ahead and install other Linux distribution which are available in Microsoft Store. But unfortunately, Kali Linux is not available, but it doesn't matter, right? We are anyway installing it using the procedure. Just click on Y here saying yes. I've already installed, so it's showing legacy Windows system for Linux distribution is already installed on my system. For you, it might take a while. After installing, the most important thing is it'll ask for you to set up a password and username. Don't skip that step, wait for a while, and make sure you set up the password and username properly. Only then the entire thing will work out. Once you've done that, we are done here. You can close the command prompt. The next thing you need to do is install git. I already have it installed. It's very easy. Install.exe file and click on the installation process. It's very straightforward. And open git bash. Yeah. Before that, let me go ahead and create a folder called text here. And as you can see, it's stored on my desktop. Right now it's empty. Anyway, let me go back to Git here and CD desktop TST. Earlier we enabled Windows subsystem for Linux, but now we have to download the script, right? For that, search for Windows subsystem for Linux Witcher. And the first link is the GitHub link. Click on that. There you go, guys. It says uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux Distribution Switcher. It says the purpose is to let you easily download and install Linux distribution as subsystem on your Windows operating system. So yeah, as you can see, you have different options here for the base operating systems. So yeah, copy this link here, Control C, and go back to Git, Git clone, and paste the link which you just downloaded. Paste it. It shouldn't take very long. It's done, guys. So now if you check your test folder, Windows subsystem for Linux will be downloaded properly. Let's just go back and check that. Here is our test folder. As you can see, Windows subsystem for Linux is already there. Now open your command prompt. CD, let's go for the text file. And if you search for the directories under that, you can see WSL here. Now let's go for that as well. You can just press tab directories under that. So as you can see, the two things, the most important things is this get prebuild.py and install py. This get prebuild.py will fetch Kali Linux Docker files and install.py will install Kali Linux for you. I already have it installed, but I'll just show you how to do it. So go back to the browser and type Docker file. Click on the second link. I just wanted you to copy the command easily so that you won't make mistakes. This is the one which you'll have to copy to fetch the Kali Linux Docker file. So you can just copy this part and go for command prompt. Let me maximize this for you. Here you can say, so if you remember, I said Python is must. So make sure you've installed it properly and set up the path. Python get prebuilt. Let me just prebuild.py and copy it. As you can see, it's installing. It's going to take probably like two minutes. So it says it's done. It says 
it's saved to this file in the text folder. Let's go back and check if it's happened. Here is a test folder under WSL. You have Python. Yeah, as you can see, you have a Python folder, a zip folder of Kali Linux installed or fetched. You'll have to install it now, right? So let me now just type Python. This is the command that you want to use. That's install.py, install.py, and copy this, or just type and enter tab, rootfs tab, and click enter. So as you can see, it took a while, but it did install, right? Now all you have to do is it's installed, so you can close the CMD and open your command prompt and run it as an administrator. Click yes. Let me maximize the screen. You'll have to set the root password or the default user as root. So set default. It's the command that you need to use. Set default user as root. As you can see, it's now set to root and click bash. Done, guys. Right now, we are running on Kali operating system on command line interface. If you want to make sure if you're actually running on Kali, just type cat etc and issue. It shows that Kali Linux rolling. So as you can see, we have successfully installed Kali Linux command line interface or how to use command line interface on Windows using Windows subsystem for Linux. And I'm telling it to you again, just use it if you know how to use command line interface very properly. Otherwise, it might be a little overwhelming for beginners. Default. It's the command that you need to use. Hit default user as root. As you can see, it's now set to root and click bash. Done, guys. Right now, we are running on Kali operating system on command line interface. If you want to make sure if you're actually running on Kali, just type cat etc and issue. It shows that Kali Linux rolling. So as you can see, we have successfully installed Kali Linux command line interface or how to use command line interface on Windows using Windows subsystem for Linux.